In this problem, we're told to use the method of cylindrical shells to find the volume generated by rotating the region bounded by the given curves about the y-axis. So this is number five, and we're given the curve uh, y equals e to the minus x squared, y equals zero, x equals zero, and x equals one. So if we go ahead and draw what's going on here, so I think understanding it graphically is the easiest way to figure out how this works. So e to the minus x squared, uh, it's going to look something like this if you graph it. Now, this isn't a perfect, a perfect drawing, but it's going to give you the idea. And then we also have y equals 0, right? That's just going to be our uh, x-axis, so this line right here. And they tell us we have x equals 0 and x equals 1. So x equals 0 is the y-axis, and then x equals 1 uh, is going to be something like this. So we're trying to find this area here. And so what you need to know to solve this is that volume... Volume using this shell method is going to be equal to 2 pi times the integral from A to B of your radius times your height times uh, delta x or dy. Depends on whether you're rotating around the x or y axis or something like that or like a vertical or horizontal line. If you're doing a vertical line, like in this case we're doing the y axis, right, which is vertical, make sure your uh, variables are in x. And if you're doing something horizontal, they're going to be in Y. So in this case, we're using DX because we're doing something vertical. And so if we go ahead and solve, V equals 2 pi. So in A and B, when you're rotating around something vertical, are going to be your, uh, essentially, if you had two equations where they meet, but in this case, they tell you X equals this and X equals this. So essentially, those are going to be our two values we use. They don't always tell you that. And so if they don't tell you, you just take your two functions, set them equal to each other. Because... Uh, sometimes they don't equal to in a good range, so they just choose values for you. So in this case, they chose them. So the values where x equals, those are going to be uh, your upper and lower bounds. So from 0 to 1. Your radius, though, is, if you're rotating around just the y-axis, is always going to be x. So if you rotate around just the y-axis, it's always going to be x. If you rotate around the x-axis, though, it's going to be y. And if you rotate around a different line, it's going to be something different, but don't worry about that now. Uh, you worry about that when you get different problems but in this case it's just going to be x if you're rotating around the y-axis and so your height is going to be uh, essentially just imagine like you're trying to find the area between two curves in this case our curve is just y equals zero right so it's just the uh, x-axis so if you're just finding the area between something in the y-axis it's just going to be your curve essentially uh, or well you take your top curve minus the bottom one so if y equals zero was above it over this interval then it would be 0 minus our curve. In this case, uh, e to the minus x squared is above it throughout this interval, right? And you know that because if you plug in any number throughout this interval, 0 to 1, into this one, it's always going to be greater. So what you're going to want to do is just take your top curve, e to the minus x squared, and then subtract it from your bottom one. In this case, it's 0. Subtracting 0 doesn't really do anything, so it's just e to the minus x squared. And so you multiply by dx, right? And so this is going to be our integral set up. Uh, if you want to go ahead and solve it yourself, you can. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to solve the integral because you should be pretty proficient at that by now. But if you go ahead and solve this, it should be the volume equals pi times 1 minus e to the minus 1. And so this right here is going to be your volume. And this is how you set up this integral. And uh, hopefully you found this useful.